praise the lord everyone and today once again i have come and i thank god for bringing me here and for uh, keeping everything okay and i hope the network will be fine so i request all of you to pray for this and also uh, be with me and be in the presence of the lord and rejoice in the lord and thank the lord all the time from the depth of our heart and uh, before we start our service uh, we will pray and i hope all of you are well and good and happy and rejoicing in the lord along with your families and uh, <clears throat> the prayer let us pray dear gracious loving heavenly father we come unto thee we praise you and thank you lord for making us ac according to thy will and making us in in your likeness dear father you have given us the opportunity to be your children dear father father we thank you and praise you for all your graciousness for your mercy for your goodness and for your faithfulness which reaches the sky lord uh, we commit this the time into your hands that you speak to us lord whatever you want us to listen and whatever you want us uh, to learn dear father and we praise you and thank you for all the people who are going to come and join this meeting and uh, who will listen to it later on also father bring lots of fruits uh, from their life and from my life and lord we thank you for anupam bhai and shabnam ji and uh, i thank you from the depth of my heart for this page also lord day by day this page may grow and prosper and give the good news to uh, countless people dear father and we ask all these things in the most precious name of our lord jesus christ amen i hope you can uh, see me uh, uh, more than seeing is it is important to listen to me can you listen to me please write in the comment box if you can listen to me otherwise i'll have to change something okay so let me put my earphone otherwise uh, the voice may not come clearly today was the day when uh, i was quite busy in many things and uh, preparing uh, this uh, lecture also like a speech as i hope you also were busy in your works and all so i uh, i just uh, request you to hold a cup of tea or coffee in your hands and then join this service Okay. <clears throat> uh, so let's sing a song first. God sent His Son. They called Him Jesus. He came to love, heal, and forgive. He bled and died. to buy my pardon an empty grave is there to prove my savior lives because he lives i can face tomorrow because he lives all fear is gone because he know i know he holds the future and life is worth the living just because he lives and then one day i'll cross my river and i'll fight the life's final war and then as death gives me to victory i know he reign it there because he lives because he lives 
I can face tomorrow because he lives. All fear is gone because I know, yes, I know, he holds the future and life is just the living word because he lives how sweet to hold a newborn baby and feel the pride and joy he gives but greater still the calm assurance this child can face uncertain days because he lives because he lives i can face tomorrow because he lives all fear is gone because i know yes i know he holds the future and life is just the living worth because he lives so jesus lives and he came to this world and he gave his life for us and uh, he he uh, shed his precious blood for us so we could be redeemed and we could uh, get the eternal life by believing in his name and for asking the forgiveness of our sins and jesus is there to forgive us and he has shown when he was in the world that he could forgive the people in his time and even today he is forgiving each one who's coming and repenting for their sins and asking for the forgiveness so here because jesus lives if he were not, not there then how could we go to someone and ask for the forgiveness but jesus himself came and he became the mediator between god and us so uh, we could get the redemption and forgiveness of our sins and get the eternal life too uh, so my dear ones uh, this is a great uh, privilege for us that we are the children of god and we can claim the eternal life Uh, for for us because of the uh, sacrifice of uh, jesus and because of god the father who gave his only son to come into this world and to give his sacrifice uh, so as uh, we have seen the uh, topic today uh, that is on the importance of forgiveness uh, we you, we must have come across this topic so many times and uh, we must have uh, heard about forgiveness we must have asked somebody for forgiveness we we may have forgiven uh, some people uh, so this is a familiar word for us but what is difference here like uh, we are going to discuss about it in the perspective of the bible in the perspective of uh, uh, god's uh, thoughts on it and what bible says about it so first of all we will see what is forgiveness <coughs> uh, it is the act of pardoning someone pardoning means giving uh, it is the act of forgiving someone of their offenses uh, suppose some someone has done some uh, bad thing to us and uh, we are offended because of that uh, but still we go and forgive that person uh, that is called forgiveness like uh, children offend their parents many times you know now for asking for various things by making noise by going out without their permission uh, but when they come and say sorry to their parents then parents uh, forgive them so similarly god to forgive us when we go to him and ask for the forgiveness and he is so kind he is so gentle uh, and uh, he has lots of love for us uh, that he can never see us uh, uh, sad or uh, with the feelings of the a repentance all the time because he wants us to live the happy life the uh, the life which is uh, open and the life which is joyful and peaceful 
that is the purpose of God for us because we are his children and who are the parents who won't like to see their children um, happy and peaceful and growing and this is what the Lord wants from us for us <coughs> so we have seen what is forgiveness it is not just an emotion but it is a decision like uh, we have to make the decision to forgive somebody we cannot just forgive a person like uh, sometimes our ego comes in the way sometimes our anger comes in the way and it's very difficult to forgive the person but we have to you know make a decision no i must forgive this person because god has forgiven my sins god has forgiven my mistakes so it is my duty to forgive this person also uh, so this is what god has taught us so we will forgive everyone who comes and asks for the forgiveness and according to the psychologist what the psychologists say about it that forgiveness is a conscious and deliberate decision to release feelings of resentment toward the person or group who has harmed you regardless of whether they actually deserve your forgiveness so here the psychologist is explaining very well that it is a conscious and deliberate decision to forgive someone uh, or to for forgive a group of people uh, regardless of what they have done unto us so they may they might have done something wrong unto us they might have gossiped against us they they might have criticized us or even they they may have abused us or hit us in spite of all that we forgive the person because god has taught uh, to do like this so it is a decision of our mind forgiveness uh, just doesn't come it's very difficult to forgive a person when somebody harms us when somebody you know, hurts us then it's it's too difficult to forgive us to forgive that person and uh, this everyone knows uh, but with the lord's strength we can do it it is possible otherwise whole world will be in chaos if we do not forgive each other uh, so let us see uh, what uh, uh, what is written in john the gospel in verse 20 23 the gospel of john and uh, chapter 20 verse 23 jesus tells the disciples if you forgive anybody's sins their sins are forgiven if you do not forgive them they are not forgiven so let's uh, see that we are given the authority to forgive other sins if somebody does anything wrong against us then we have to forgive that person and if we do not forgive that person that person will not be forgiven so my dear we have to remember this that if someone does wrong unto us then and ask for the forgiveness then we have to forgive the person even otherwise even though they don't ask for forgiveness we have to forgive that person uh, so this is very important aspect of life and jesus taught us to pray also when disciples asked him uh, lord teach us how to pray then jesus said a very important sentence in the prayer of our father who who art in heaven he said that lord forgive uh, our trespasses as we forgive others trespasses yes, so it shows that if we forgive others their trespasses their sins then only the lord will forgive us and uh, the lord forgives us other other way also we can say because the lord forgives us for our trespasses so we should forgive others trespasses also and there is a very interesting story in the bible uh, which uh, talks about the unforgiveness of a servant unforgiveness of a servant and that story is given in matthew chapter 18 and verses 21 to 22 um in yes, seven uh, no sorry this is uh, this verse is uh, regarding uh, the regarding the disciple peter peter asks the lord 
Peter asks Jesus Christ that how many times should we forgive a person? Seven times? Then Jesus says, says no. We have to forgive the person 70 into 7 times. 70 into 7 that means 490 times. Uh, but it does not mean that we have to forgive the person just for 490 times. We have to forgive the, the person unlimited. We don't have to count it. So as many as times somebody does wrong to us, we have to forgive the person. And for this we need lot of patience and lot of you know love in our hearts and uh, lot of grace in our mind, uh, in, in ourselves. Otherwise we cannot forgive the person. Uh, so when we have the Lord with us, when we uh, follow the Lord, when we follow His commandments and we follow the characteristics of Jesus, then only it is possible uh, to love the person and to forgive the person. Uh, otherwise, uh, it, the life would become very difficult uh, for both the sides, the person who makes the mistakes and person who does not forgive that person. Uh, because uh, this uh, unforgiving spirit that creates the bitterness in our hearts and uh, this bitterness leads to uh, uh, peacelessness in our mind and uh, it, um, uh, it just encroaches on our emotions and it does not allow us to live happily because all the time uh, the thought of that person comes to our mind, that person who has uh, done something wrong unto us and we think again and again and again about that person that how come that person has done this thing to me and we keep on thinking about that and uh, you know it is not uh, only harmful for that person who did wrong to us but it is more harmful to us because we carry that bitterness against the person and all the time we think about that thought only that is why you know uh, our BP goes how uh, high, the blood pressure becomes high and the pulse rate becomes high and the stomach produces uh, the acids in inside and a headache occurs and so many kinds of sign and symptoms occur when we think about the person who has done wrong unto us. But if we forgive that person then all those symptoms go away and a peace you know uh, comes into us because the peace which, which the Lord has given which the Lord Jesus has given before going he said I gave I give the peace unto you the peace which the world does not give uh, but and this peace nobody can take away yes, so when we forgive a person uh, that peace comes into us and all those harmful signs and symptoms you know uh, they go away and the tension uh, and the stress in our mind which is created because of uh, 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 that person who has done wrong to us whom we cannot forgive uh, that stress can lead to so many diseases also it can lower the immunity it can make the high blood pressure it can lead to the uh, diseases for example heart problems and uh, the research says that uh, due to tension all the time due to anxiety even cancer can take place so my dear friends we have to do away with this kind of feeling we have to give away the bitterness with the lord's strength and ask the lord lord give me the strength to forgive the person lord give me to reduce my ego but uh, let me show yours uh, yourself in my nature because we are supposed to wear the righteousness of God and when we wear the righteousness of God then all those qualities uh, will be reflected from our lives so it's not easy to forgive but we have to forgive because it is the Lord's commandment for us to forgive each other and Lord has showed uh, and he has given his own example on the cross when he forgave the people, uh, those who persecuted him. Uh, so, this is a big lesson. And then uh, in Matthew chapter 18, 23 to 35, uh, one story is given. 
that story is that uh, there was a servant and he owed lot of money to his master and uh, it was the money is mentioned it was about 10000 talents so i don't know how much it would have been at that time 10000 talents but it seems it was a big amount and uh, this servant could not give back the money and uh, the the king the master said to his people go and take the money back from all those people who have uh, borrowed uh, so um, they went but this person cannot could not give back the money and he pleaded in front of the in front of the master because master told him that if he cannot give the money back then put him in the jail along with his family and uh, take away all his belongings from his house so this person becomes very very uh, you know uh, afraid that what would happen now i welcome uh, jana alam and thank you for coming god bless you and uh, this person was uh, so so much afraid that he fell down on the feet of the master and he said forgive me master i will repay the money slowly slowly but please don't put me in the jail so master had you know compassion on him and he forgave him uh, so this is how the, the big big amount was forgiven uh, to this servant and when this servant came out you know his fellow servant was there who owed the money towards this first servant so this first servant told uh, that another servant give back my money and it was a little amount it, it was in dinarai dinarai is a very little amount uh, it was about uh, uh, 100 dinarai which uh, this uh, other fellow had taken so the first servant asked him to give back that money but he didn't have he said that please give me some time then i will return your money but this first servant was so cruel he said i will uh, put you in the jail if you do not give my money and uh, he really put him in the jail so when the master came to know about it he was so angry he said i have forgiven him a lot of debt a big a huge amount of debt and how come he can behave with another fellow like this so she became so angry that he called that first servant and put him in the jail and he said till you uh, pay back uh, uh, the single pie uh, all the money you will remain in the jail uh, so see when god has forgiven us uh, it is our duty to forgive other people also we cannot be harsh and cruel to other people like what god has done god has shown his mercy uh, on to us so we have to show mercy to them also now because it is the lord's uh, lord's commandment that as i have forgiven you you forgive others and uh, uh, after that we will see that in the forgiveness there are seven steps uh, we cannot just tell the person okay i forgive you you know uh you have done the wrong thing but you are sorry for this so i forgive you this is not enough because this is a process this is a process it has to go through various steps so first of all uh, the step is acknowledge the hurt acknowledge the hurt means i have to acknowledge how that person has hurt me and i have to think about that then the second step is consider how the hurt and pain has affected you uh, how i am affected because when somebody hurts me like somebody in your family hurts you then what happens you go through uh, so much pain and uh, start having the headache you don't feel like eating anything uh, you don't feel like uh, smiling or laughing don't feel like watching the, the tv or listening to songs because you are hurt so uh, this hurt affects the person and uh, we have to consider that too and then number 3 accept that you cannot change the past like if the person hurts us we cannot change the past like uh, if a person has uh, taken away something from us and not given back then we cannot go into the past and uh, take that thing from the person but we have to think about uh, the better future 
so we can think about the better future or we can make the future better only when we forget the past so many times we have to and do away with all those wrong things what people have done and we have to think of the better future and that will be better for us and our family too because every day in every day life somebody or the other hurts us even though we are good uh, but people you know uh, they are uh, not uh, appreciating us they are not satisfied if we are too good then they will make comments oh uh, just see uh, she is or he is showing off that uh, a very nice person he or she is like that people will keep on hurting you and many times uh, they will talk uh, bad about you in front of the people that you know she does this she does that uh, so that uh, that thing hurts us and when this hurt goes deep inside then it will go on and on and it will become harmful for our personality and our health uh, so it is written that we have to uh, do away with the past because we cannot go back into the past but we can make our future better by for forgiving that person and by forgetting those things and we can think about god that how uh, he suffered in into this world and still he forgave the people and i am god's child uh, so i should do in the same way and the fourth point is determine whether uh, determine whether or not you will forgive uh, this is our own decision whether we want to forgive or not want to forgive because so many times uh, we have seen that uh, friends if the friends become angry with each other and they break their friendship uh, they do not talk to each other for for a long time or probably for the for the whole life they do not talk to each other and many times the husband and wife they when they hurt each other they get separated and they they do never come back uh, to their uh, you know spouse because they think that this person has hurt me so i will never come back you know this is how people find it so difficult to forgive each other and their ego comes into in the way even the god says tells them that you forgive the person but they do not because their ego is so strong that they do not forgive and in the long run both these parties suffer and in one of the meetings in one of the conventions i saw that in the end one husband and wife they came to the stage and they they forgave each other and they hugged each other and they were you know separated for a long long time but when they heard the preaching of the of the person of the priest then they realized that it was wrong on to their part and they forgave each other and they, they came and re, uh, they made the reconciliation with each other uh, and the joy filled their heart and the peace just flew into their life so this is the power of forgiveness that forgiveness gives us lot of joy and peace and so many things good health so this is uh, the lesson that we must forgive each other whether it is uh, a brother to brother because brothers so many times you know they fight for the property or they fight for something else and they do not forgive each other for the whole life and they die with the same feeling i have seen with my own eyes that the brothers don't talk to each other and uh, one of them dies and then where is he that uh, one can go and ask for the forgiveness because that guilt will go uh, till the death in the another person and it will go not only in the uh, in the world but it will go even till the time of judgment when god will judge them uh, so we should never uh, take uh, keep the, the unforgiving spirit in our uh, personality for a long time then repair when we uh, think of uh, forgiving then we have to repair all the uh, broken pieces of our heart we have to 
bring them together and we have to repair it and again we have to give the shape of a beautiful heart so many people say that once uh, you know the thread is broken it does not remain the same but with the god's strength with the god's love it it will be the heart will take the original shape you know because god is almighty he can do anything is there anything um, impossible for him so we should commit all these things to the lord so after the repair uh, we have to learn we have to learn that uh, it is my mistake and uh, it, uh, i have to uh, ask for the forgiveness i have to leave my ego and ask for the forgiveness and we have to go and forgive so that is the last stage that forgiveness comes now, so the whole process of forgiveness in that we have and um, acknowledge the hurt then consider how the hurt has affected you then accept that you cannot change the past and determine whether you are going to forgive or not after that repair and then learn and then forgive so th this is just the theory part which i thought let me uh, give a little summary of what the forgiveness is even though there is lot and lot written about it but it is good to have little idea of what the bible says about forgiveness and what the uh, psychologists say about it and every day in our life you know uh, we are struggling we are struggling uh, with ourselves because we we may be angry with so many people we may be hurt with many people we may be hurt uh, uh, with our friends or um, by our relatives and by the teachers by the boss and when we are hurt you know that hurt you know that uh, really kills us all the time it comes into our mind all the time it does that thought does not leave us for a second so that means that person who has hurt that person is you know empowering us that person's power has come onto us so if we don't forget that uh, then it will remain with us so we uh, don't let others to empower your mind and uh, just let it go let it be don't think about that and it is best to ask the lord to give us the power uh, to give us the patience and tolerance to forgive the person then uh, there are so many examples of forgiveness in the bible so now let us see the biblical aspect of the forgiveness and uh, in the bible so many examples are given in the old testament in the old testament uh, first of all jacob and esau jacob and esau all of us remember that story that um, jacob was very cunning and uh, he comes to his father and uh, uh, he takes away the birth right of esau and uh, when esau heard it then he cried and he felt so bad then after that of course they had separated they, uh, jacob had gone somewhere else and he uh, he was doing his own work got married and all and when he was returning uh, returning home that time he was too afraid that what his brother would would do now and esau uh, might probably kill him so he was he was too afraid so fear comes into his heart the fear has gripped him and then uh, he sends his you know uh, people in the front first he sent them then the gifts he sent then he remained at the uh, end because he didn't want to be killed by esau so when esau saw all this the esau's heart was filled with love and compassion for his brother and he he forgave his brother jacob and he uh, he just hugged him and he forgot everything else and through esau so many blessings came in jacob's life so this is the beautiful example of forgiveness how esau forgave jacob then the second example is joseph and his brothers you know joseph uh, they were 12 brothers and uh, joseph had very uh, mysterious dreams that Uh, he would become a big person one day and even his mother and father will bow down in front of him 
and his brothers 11 brothers also will bow down in front of him uh, so when he said all those things about the dream to his father and mother they were not offended they were they were happy but the brothers they felt jealous because uh, uh, jacob loved joseph too much the maximum uh, love jacob had for joseph only uh, so the, all the brothers felt very jealous and they they thought of killing him but they could not kill uh, because uh, some uh, you know business people were coming uh, so they sold jacob to that business person and to that business person he took uh, jacob, uh, this joseph to egypt and there egypt, in egypt joseph of course suffered so many things and he had a very bad childhood he had to work very hard but in the uh, end god blessed him and joseph becomes the prime minister of egypt and all the power was given to him by the king and uh, in the end the, his dream comes true when there was famine uh, in the land where his family lived uh, jacob and his brothers and mother that time they come to jacob for the food you know and they bowed down to him even though they did not rec- recognize their brother but joseph recognized them so we see that if somebody somebody does wrong uh, towards someone then god lifts that person up then god is with that person because joseph was very dedicated man and he was uh, obedient uh, towards god all the time and he even uh, means uh, he ran away from sin when potiphar's wife wanted to grab him and uh, for for the adultery but J- this joseph did not give up you know any other man would have given up that joseph ran away from that so, so this kind of behavior god liked in him and he honored him that he became the prime minister of that country so we can imagine that in forgiveness that is lot of power because uh, uh, joseph forgave his parents par- not parents but his brothers and he accepted them and he gave them enough food and even kept them in egypt for the good life for the prosperous life uh, so uh, his forgiveness is very famous so this is another lovely story of forgiveness then the third story is that god forgave israelites in the wilderness when moses brought them out uh, through the red sea and uh, sea departed into two parts and the israelites could come out of egypt then they had to go through the wilderness and through wilderness when they were going god provided them food and water even uh, that waters uh, water was in the form of a uh, you know mountain and that water mountain was you know walking with them and the food was coming in the form of manna uh, every day fresh and the quails also uh, god sent for them because they they were yearning to have meat but still they were you know um, mumbling and grumbling every day and uh, uh, this moses who was carrying them he also became so upset and uh, that he had to uh, he had to put his uh, stick on that mountain twice then uh, god had asked him not to strike that mountain because that mountain you know that reflects jesus christ uh, so this uh, that's why god became so angry with moses also that he could not see the promised land and all these people the israelites who were going through the wilderness for 40 years all of them died except uh, the one person you know joshua and uh, and caleb of course so those two people only were surviving and they could go to the promised land which is canaan uh, so here we see that god was in spite of god's forgiveness these people did not understand these people did not you know understand god's goodness and his mercy and his grace and they could not have patience and not only this they made a, a graven image for them and they started worshiping that image 
and God abhors uh, this uh, idol worship. They knew it, but still they did that. So, so much of uh, you know disobedience they showed, and that's why uh, God was so angry with them that none of them survived except Joshua and Caleb. And uh, Moses also uh, could not go because he also disobeyed God by striking on the mountain. And then the f next example we see, I have to look at the time also. Next example is of David. David when he committed adultery and uh, when he could not focus on the God, uh, on the Lord, when he could not focus on uh, the war which was going on and he was just walking on the roof of his house, then he saw uh, uh, Bathsheba and he committed sin with her and he committed adultery and not only not only adultery but he got her husband killed so he was guilty of adultery and the murder even though he was a man whom god loved so much he was the man after god's own heart but you know uh, he he committed such a uh, such a serious sin that God could not have forgiven him. But because uh, David uh, uh, felt so sorry, repented so much, he cried so much and uh, uh, God forgave him. So here is the uh, example of forgiveness when Lord forgave this person uh, because he loved him and because David repented so much. That is why. But he could not do away with the consequences because when the uh, first baby was uh, born b due to this adultery that baby died he could not survive so God forgives but he uh, shows the consequences in the life of the uh, people or in the life of believers it's not that believers will just uh, go away without any punishment God for uh, God punishes the believers also because he expects holy life from them. When God is holy, uh, He wants His people also to be holy. Then God spares Nineveh, then God, uh, Jesus and the paralytic man, then paralytic man was brought to uh, Jesus. Then Jesus, what did He say? He said, uh, my son, your sins are forgiven. He did not say that mm, you are healed. First of all, He says, your sins are forgiven so jesus knew that nobody is you know a sinless in this world everyone has sinned in roman so many times it is written that no one is righteous if someone says that a person is righteous then uh, he or she is telling lie so all have come short of the glory of god and no one is righteous in this world so here we see that in this par parable when uh, this uh, paralytic man was brought to Jesus then Jesus first of all said uh, that uh, son your sins are forgiven so when his sins were forgiven he became all right he became healthy and Jesus said take up your cot and uh, go home so here we see the miraculous healing of this paralytic man because of the forgiveness uh, from Jesus Christ then there are so many examples in the New Testament also. But before starting New Testament, I think I should finish here only because there, there are many things and I don't want to leave any part of it because it's very, very important. So uh, from this much passage, uh, we should ask ourselves, God, is there anything uh, I am holding against somebody? Uh, is there anything wrong in me? Have I not forgiven someone in my life, in my home, in my school, in my workplace? Is there anybody whom I have not forgiven? Is there anyone who has taken money from me and not returned and I have not forgiven that person? So we have to ask ourselves this question. Uh, did I hurt somebody? Like uh, uh, in the Bible it is written, before the sunset you should go and ask for the forgiveness. So if uh, in the family uh, uh, people are you know angry with each other or fought with each other 
then before sleeping they have to ask for the forgiveness they should they should come and say i am very sorry that i have hurt you i am sorry that i have said that to you so that brings so much peace and uh, peaceful and sweet sleep also uh, because the forgiveness does miracle and god comes and uh, lives there wherever there is forgiveness wherever there is joy and happiness uh, so here you know, we see that so many husband and wife they go to sleep without uh, talking to each other without forgiving each other they must have you know fought with each other uh, and uh, on some petty issue and sometimes husband says that you have spoiled the children because uh, uh, you don't correct them and then wife says no you have spoiled so they they fight with each other just uh, for this chatty things and then uh, they uh, they become angry with each other and they don't uh, go to sleep peacefully and they just go on you know um, feeling thinking bad about it uh, so in that case if one of the partners come and say uh, uh, darling i am sorry i said that uh, i was in a bad mood please forgive me and then naturally this uh, second person also uh, would be you know polite and say i too am sorry you know the so for these small small things we uh, we should not fight with each other and we we must understand each other and if we have fought also we must forgive each other and should never take the uh, things in our heart and go to sleep because we cannot sleep peacefully and uh, similarly if we have fought with our friend then we should ask for the forgiveness from the friend also before sleeping just phone him just ask him uh, that uh, my dear i was uh, wrong when i said that to you so please forgive me so there is nothing uh, nothing goes from us you know by asking for the forgiveness forgiveness brings the sweet thoughts in our hearts the sweet feelings into our minds uh, but ego says no 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 don't for, don't go and ask for forgiveness no, you have done nothing wrong what you did is right because satan says that you are right you what you have done is right so what is the need for asking for the forgiveness don't ask why do you become little be little in front of the person but no if we love god if we love jesus then we have to follow his footsteps and we have to follow what god has taught us so in every situation in every condition we have to forgive each other and god says again and again in the bible that be loving to each other be forgiving to each other and be supporting to each other because uh, the man the person cannot live alone into this world one needs each other and without each other's help we cannot survive into this world and we cannot have the joy of the lord in our life so my dear we have to uh, this is the a uh, burning point in in my heart that uh, did i not forgive somebody because uh, <coughs> you know many people hurt and in the job place also like our colleagues they hurt us they say the things which are uh, very bitter and they go and complain against us when we have d- done nothing wrong you know they go and complain then it's so difficult not to forgive that person and uh, that very difficult to talk uh, when uh, that person comes uh, in front of us um, we just uh, don't look at that person but my dear the love wins everything the love covers all the faults so we have to have the love of god for this and love of god will give us the strength to forgive the person and uh, do away with our ego and let that go let it go so this we have to remember the whole week is there someone whom we have not forgiven because sometimes the death comes and we go without forgiving somebody somebody the uh, somebody dies uh, whom we have not forgiven then it is no use you know uh, repenting the whole life because in heaven god will ask you, know, you did not forgive this, this person when the judgment will take place so if one has not forgiven somebody that person has no right to live in heaven 
because God expects us to forgive each and every one like Jesus has forgiven everyone in spite of all the persecution and uh, uh, death and cross what people had given him uh, so my dear ones uh, let us uh, finish it here and rest of the portion we will do on next Saturday because every Saturday we have the sermon in English and every Tuesday we have sermon in Hindi uh, so please do come and uh, encourage me and be with me and Lord bless you all and uh, please subscribe this page like this page and share with others and uh, pray for Anupam brother and Shabnam ji uh, that they may have the strength and good health and time in spite of all their busy schedule uh, to spread the gospel of the Lord. So let us pray. Dear gracious loving Heavenly Father we come unto thee. We praise you and thank you Lord Jesus that you have guided us guided us and uh, in this sharing lord you have taught us so many things lord we are so egoistic at times lord forgive us for being egoistic forgive us for being harsh to somebody forgive us for thinking bad about somebody forgive forgive when we criticize somebody dear heavenly father let us see good in everyone because when we think good uh, for others we feel the peace and joy in our life in our heart and we feel the presence of God then we are you know clean in our heart and we don't keep anything against anybody we are having